Hello, my name's Mark. Today I want to show you guys how to create this mini task from Among Us. It's like Simon says. All right, let's show you how the game works. If you hit start, it brings up the panel, tells you what button to click um, by the lights over there. If you click them all in order, it keeps giving you the additional button to click, increments your level. And I don't remember what the last one was. I misclicked and it all turned red. If uh, you click them all right, they all, all of these lights turn green and it passes you and uh, closes the panel. In the hierarchy, I started with a new scene and I right clicked UI and went to panel and it gave me a canvas, wall panel and a canvas and an event system. And the reason why we do these mini games in a new scene is so we can drag the canvas into turn into a prefab and then we can drag that prefab into whatever game scene we want. We have this panel and we need a script so we right clicked in the scripts create scripts C sharp script and named it Simon Says Minigame and we attached it to the panel by clicking and dragging it into the inspector. We then have a couple of grids that we set up and we just right click and create empty and then we attached a grid component to it. You can see the grid layout group and you just adjust these to the right cell size and spacing to get what you want. Um, but the button grid, as you can see, is are these buttons right here. Then we have another uh, empty game object. We named it left light row grid, which is these lights right here. We also have a right light row grid, which are these lights. Then another empty game object we named light grid. And there's a grid in here that shows where all, all the lights are located. And right now the lights are still on their um, alpha channels just been set to zero. And you can see that when clicking in here, you drag this all the way down and it makes them invisible. If you're not understanding what's going on in the hierarchy, we recommend becoming a member on our site and going to the link in the description of this video below where we'll show you what goes into the hierarchy and the inspector views. And then we'll also uh, have the script there in the post that members will be able to copy and paste. All right, let's show you the code, which is my favorite part. We have a couple of game object arrays. We named the first one buttons because it holds all the buttons that get pressed in and it gets held all in one array. And then we have the lights that show up on the left panel, the ones that go in order. We have that named light array. And then we have the row of lights and we put the left and right side in the same row of lights array. Then we have a uh, an array of ints, which we named light order. This is just the game panel, that beginning game panel that we drag in here to exit and open. Uh, we keep track of what level the player is on. Essentially, it's a, you know, you pass one level and it gives you another, um, another light to the next level. It's a very, very short level system. Okay, we have an int that keeps track of our buttons clicked another int that's a color order run count. Then we have a bool that checks if we passed, another bool to check if we won. Then we have a couple colors that we don't want to continually reference what numbers to put in these, so we just uh, declared them up here. So whenever we type red, we're gonna be putting in a new color, um, this new red color. Same goes to green and invisible and back to white. Then I noticed that the light order, like I had it set to half a second or something and it was a, li it was a little bit too long. It might've been a, a second, but uh, I made it so I could change it in the inspector by doing a public float, named it light speed. On our enable function, which gets called every time the panel gets enabled or we um, call it in script, we will want to reset the game because it will be starting uh, fresh. So we set the level to zero, the buttons click to zero, color order run count to negative one um, because we add one 
and we want to start it at zero when it actually starts. We set one to false, just to double check. And then, so this is where we get our random order of lights. All right, this for loop checks to see when i is less than the light order length. Um, so that array that we set and it will loop through until each light order position has a random range between zero and eight. This will give us our new light order, like the lights that the, or the order that the lights will go in. Then we have this for loop that checks the row light length and it's just to set all of the lights back to um, their neutral color, which is white. And again, these are the colors we already set up in, up here. We set the level equal to one. Whenever it gets called on enable, their level will be level one. And that's just where we, where I wanted to start it. So after all this is run, it goes to the start co coroutine color order. And color order is a, um, let me go down here. It shows you, so it sets the buttons clicked to equal to zero. Color order run count gets incremented and then it disables the interactable buttons, which is another function we have down here. You don't want the buttons getting pushed when the light order is going because then they can follow along, along instantly with the light order, which makes it really easy. So we have a function called disable interactable buttons. Uh, we have a for loop that loops through the buttons array and turns all the buttons interactability to false. And then we have an enable interactable buttons, which does the same thing with the for loop, but instead of setting it to false, it sets it to true. So we call the disable in interactable buttons because we don't want any buttons clicked while the light order is going. And uh, the color run count is how many times this for loop is going to run. So we want to increment this every time the color order gets called because it will get called again next time and we will want this to be run twice to show you two colors or two lights. So the first time it's run through, this is one, the color order run count. Oh, actually it's zero um, because we set the color order run count to negative one. So the first time it's zero and it's less than or equal to, so it runs only once. Uses the light array, grabs the light order, which is a number, it's that integer. And because it's I, it grabs this zero up here, gives us the light order of that first array and puts the number in here to then let us know what light array we want to make uh, green. So we have it be invisible first, just to make sure that it's actually, there's a uh, wait period. And then um, we have it turn green. And then we have it go back to being invisible. And if the light or if the color orders the second time around, it will run through again, put a uh, one in this I spot, which will be a different light order and it will uh, turn a different light on. Okay, and then if we go to the button click order, this is the function that looks for an int, which is the button numbers that we have set up. All right, this checks to see if we're clicking the right buttons in the right order. And the first if statement checks to see our, if our button clicked is equal to the light order that it's supposed to be. So it will check what position the light order array is in. Um, so if the light order says it's in position two or element two, but it's eight, then it will check to see if the button that was pushed was eight. We have a debug that just says pass. And then we also set pass to equal to true. And then we call else. If this wasn't true, then we'll call false and we'll set one to false and pass to false. Then we'll start our next code routine called color blink. And this asks for one of the color inputs, whether we want to blink red or green. Red for if we select the wrong button or green if we, if we end up passing. So this goes down to our color blink. 
which is a for loop that runs through all the colors and changes them. And we have the variable called color blinks. So red will go in here and change the colors to the buttons and the row of lights on the right side um, to red. And then after they blink three times because the for loop gets run, well, the for loop gets run through the length, and then we have this outside for loop that runs through uh, three times so that they'll turn on and back off. And then we have a timer that pauses in between them turning on and off, so it's not instant. We have the row of lights int i set equal to five, so it doesn't run through that first half of the array, which is the left side, side of row of lights. And then because we call color blink when we win, we want to check to see if one is true. And when one is true, we'll put the winning stuff in here that we want in this around this debug log, and then we'll close out of the panel. So this is where we would increment the task list and uh, the task progress bar. If we go back up to the button click order, we have if button buttons clicked equals level and passed equals true and buttons clicked is not equal to five. Then we increment the level, we set passed back to false and we start the coroutine color order, which will show us the next list of colors that we want that we'll need to click. And then we have another if that checks the same exact thing, but it just checks to make sure that when buttons clicked equals five, that will send the win screen. And so we start coroutine color blink green, and it will change the colors to green. And we'll also set one to true, so that that last if statement of the color blink will get called. Coroutines are an awesome way to add some pauses and time delays into your game. And you do that by, it's kind of like a function call, but you have to put I enumerator in front of it. And then you have the function name, and you can have the parameters. And then um, what you, you have to have in there is a yield return new, and you can have different things. But uh, for this one, we use wait for seconds. And we have the seconds that we want to wait. You can have this be a public variable that you can change in the inspector like we did for uh, the light speed so that we can fine tune how fast the colors are shown. But every time this yield return wait for seconds, uh, 0.5, it's half of a second, gets called, that's, that's another wait and another pause. So uh, when you for loop through this, it will pause in between turning on and off the lights and it, it just gives a really cool effect. If you weren't able to get this work to work on your own just with this video, we recommend going to the blog link in the description of this video and uh, becoming a member where we'll show you the code and you'll be able to reference it or copy and paste it into your own script. We do recommend changing up the game a little bit if you're wanting to put it into your own games.